Welcome to Farming Aid. As the demand for smarter, more sustainable protein grows, ranchers and food producers are exploring options that go far beyond traditional beef. One of the most surprising ideas gaining traction is the rise of bison hybrids, animals that carry the strength and resilience of the American bison blended with the meat qualities of modern cattle. For some people this sounds experimental, but across the country ranchers are seriously testing whether these hybrids could become a practical solution for feeding a changing nation. Rising feed costs, tougher weather patterns and shifting consumer expectations are all pushing the livestock industry to rethink what the next generation of meat animals should look like. In this video we take a closer look at whether bison hybrids have what it takes to move from a niche curiosity to a meaningful part of America's future protein supply. To understand why bison hybrids are getting attention you need to appreciate the resilience of the American bison. Before industrial ranching, before fences and irrigation systems and synthetic feeds, bison shaped the grasslands of North America through pure instinct and evolutionary fitness. They could survive events that would cripple a typical cattle operation today. Their natural grazing behavior maintains grassland health. Their ability to travel long distances in search of forage reduces pressure on any single patch of land. Their immune systems evolved to handle the unpredictable climate patterns of the Great Plains. These traits become even more important as ranchers across the country deal with hotter summers, longer droughts, feed shortages, and rising veterinary costs. Bison can survive on lower quality forage, tolerate temperature swings that stress cattle and thrive with minimal human intervention. These biological advantages are what make researchers and ranchers look at hybrids as a way of blending durability and meat productivity. A hybrid between a bison and a cow is usually called a beefalo or sometimes a catalo depending on genetic ratios and breeding practices. The history of creating them goes back more than a century, though early attempts were inconsistent. Modern breeding has improved significantly because ranchers now understand which cattle lines pair best with bison and how to manage the calves during the early stages of life. The appeal of these hybrids lies in the idea that you can capture the environmental toughness of the bison while still producing tender and marbled meat similar to beef. For many years the beef industry did not pay much attention to this idea because traditional cattle breeds were still profitable. But as cost pressures rise and consumer expectations change, the hybrid concept has resurfaced with a new sense of urgency. One of the strongest arguments in favor of bison hybrids is the potential for better land use. Beef production can be highly demanding on rangeland. Overgrazing, soil erosion and desertification are common risks in areas where stocking rates are not matched to the land's natural carrying capacity. Hybrids inherit the efficient grazing style of bison, which means they take smaller bites, move more frequently and encourage the regrowth of grasses instead of stripping them down. This type of movement-based grazing may support healthier pastures over time, which could benefit ranchers who want to maintain long-term productivity rather than push the land to its limits each year. Healthy rangelands also play a role in carbon storage, meaning hybrid herds have the potential to support more climate-friendly ranching. There is also a compelling feed efficiency story behind these animals. Modern cattle, especially high-performance beef breeds, often rely on high-energy feed during finishing stages. While this is great for marbling and weight gain, it can also be expensive and carbon-intensive. Bison hybrids can achieve market weight while consuming less supplemental feed, especially if they are raised on native grasslands. Their digestive systems are better adapted to fibrous forage. In some regions ranchers report that hybrids maintain body condition during droughts when cattle lose weight rapidly. This kind of feed efficiency becomes incredibly important at a time when grain prices fluctuate sharply and when more ranchers try to shift toward pasture-based or regenerative systems. If you look at consumer trends the timing also seems favorable. Over the last decade Americans have shown growing interest in meat that is leaner, nutrient-dense and raised with fewer antibiotics. Bison meat has built a reputation as a premium lean protein with strong nutritional value, but because pure bison are slow-growing and difficult to scale, 
the market remains small and expensive. Hybrids could bridge that gap by offering meat with some of the same nutritional advantages while still reaching market size at a more predictable rate. Many people who have tasted meat from hybrid animals describe it as slightly sweeter than beef, noticeably lean and often more tender. This positions it well for health-conscious shoppers, athletic consumers, and the growing segment of buyers looking for meat with a distinctive story behind it. However the idea of scaling a hybrid-based protein industry is not without complications. One of the biggest challenges is the complexity of breeding. Bison are harder to handle than cattle. Their instincts are wilder. They jump higher, run faster and stress easily. Cross-breeding must be done with both animal welfare and rancher safety in mind. Not all cattle breeds cross well with bison. Some calves are difficult to deliver naturally, which creates a risk for cows that are not well matched for the hybrid pregnancy. Modern ranchers have gained more experience and now select cattle breeds that produce safer calvings. But it remains a barrier for newcomers. Scaling something like this requires widespread knowledge transfer, training programs and infrastructure that supports hybrid ranching. There is also a cultural dimension to this debate. For generations the American beef industry has shaped rural identity and economic structures in many regions. Cattle breeds are deeply tied to traditions, breed registries, and long-standing commercial systems. Introducing hybrids means asking ranchers to adjust their workflow, allow for different grazing patterns and sometimes tolerate animals that are more independent or less predictable. At the same time there is an emotional weight around the bison itself. Many conservationists believe bison should remain wild and protected, not selectively bred with cattle. Others argue that hybrids can reduce pressure on wild bison herds by providing similar meat qualities without disrupting pure populations. The cultural tensions around heritage, conservation and innovation shape how quickly hybrids could be accepted as a mainstream protein source. Economic considerations also play a huge role. Building a nationwide hybrid meat industry would require investment across multiple stages. Ranchers would need breeding stock, pasture systems optimized for hybrid behavior and fencing that can handle stronger and more athletic animals. Processors would need protocols for handling hybrid carcasses that can differ slightly from cattle. Retailers would need to educate consumers on what hybrid meat is, how it tastes and why it might be worth a premium. There is also a marketing challenge since many shoppers are unfamiliar with hybrid meats and may assume they are genetically engineered when in reality they are simply produced through natural breeding. Creating consumer trust will be as important as creating supply. The regulatory landscape adds another layer. Meat labeling rules influence what producers can call hybrid products. And how they differentiate them from beef or bison. Accurate labeling protects consumers but it also shapes market perception. Some ranchers worry that if hybrids cannot be labeled clearly, shoppers may choose beef simply because it is familiar. Others believe that the uniqueness of hybrid meat can become an advantage, especially if it is tied to sustainability claims backed by transparent data. As the industry evolves, policymakers may need to adjust labeling frameworks to support innovation without misleading buyers. Despite the challenges, the momentum behind hybrid programs is rising. Research institutions continue to study feed conversion, carcass quality, disease resistance and grazing behavior. Some ranchers who adopted hybrids early report that their operations have become more resilient. They talk about lower vet bills, fewer losses during harsh winters and cattle that maintain condition on grass when conventional breeds struggle. These testimonies have influenced new ranchers to explore hybrids, especially those operating in drought-prone western states. As these networks grow, so does the potential for a sustainable supply chain. From a broader food security perspective hybrids could offer the United States a more diversified protein system. Relying heavily on traditional beef alone creates vulnerabilities. A mix of cattle, bison and hybrids could create a more stable and adaptable system. If severe drought hits one region, 
hybrids that can thrive on tougher forage may carry more of the supply. If climate conditions shift again, the genetic diversity they bring could help ranching systems adjust. Diversity at the herd level mirrors the concept of biodiversity in nature. It makes the system more robust to shocks and more capable of bouncing back. There is also a growing conversation about how hybrid herds might integrate with regenerative grazing systems. These systems aim to rebuild soil, increase water retention and create healthier grasslands. Bison evolved with the North American grassland, so their patterns of trampling, grazing, and movement are often seen as ideal for regenerating prairie. Hybrids may carry enough of these traits to support regenerative goals more effectively than cattle alone. As the regenerative movement grows, especially among younger ranchers, hybrids could become a natural fit for operations that want to combine economics and ecology. Looking ahead, the path for bison hybrids is uncertain but full of potential. They are not a magic solution and they are not intended to replace cattle entirely. Instead they represent a new direction that blends the best of America's wild past with the realities of modern food demand. As climate pressure intensifies and as consumers ask harder questions about sustainability, animal welfare, and nutritional quality, hybrids may find themselves positioned as a practical answer. Their story is compelling. Their biology offers clear advantages in the right environments. Their meat appeals to a market segment that is growing each year. Yet it will take time for the industry to mature. Successful protein sectors do not emerge overnight. Beef, poultry, and pork achieved dominance through decades of breeding, infrastructure investments, consumer education and regulatory frameworks. If hybrids are going to scale, they will need similar long-term commitment. That means collaboration between ranchers, researchers, processors, and policymakers. It also means public conversations about how these animals fit within the ethics and identity of American ranching. The future of protein depends not only on biology and economics but also on narrative. People want to know the story behind their food. Hybrid producers will need to craft a story that honors the legacy of the bison while acknowledging the realities of modern meat production. In the end the question of whether bison hybrids will become America's next major protein source is still unfolding, but the direction of the conversation is clear. These animals offer toughness that ranchers need in a harsher climate, efficient grazing that supports healthier land and a meat profile that fits what many consumers want today. They are not here to replace beef, but they are forcing the industry to think differently about resilience, diversity, and the future of sustainable protein. Whether hybrids grow into a mainstream option or remain a regional specialty, they've already sparked a shift in how we imagine the next chapter of American livestock. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like it, drop a comment with your thoughts and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next deep dive into the future of farming and food.